We have finished our questions, so if you need to go, get out of here. But if you want to see if this goes anywhere, stick around. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. The desk wobble is real. If you're new here, my name's Ash, I'm 27. I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast. And on this channel, we do all things try hack me walkthroughs, capture the flags and cybersecurity challenges. On today's video, we are going over the current event from Try Hack Me, Advent of Cyber, and we're up to day 11. For any more information, a playlist will be down below, timestamps, links will all be in the description. All right, let's get into the video. So I've logged in on tryhackme.com. I'm up to task 16, day 11, memory forensics. So we have a start machine. While I'm here, I'm just gonna click that, get that booted. So we've got a workstation or a computer, a system that we're going to investigate. And there was some random code running from command prompt. That's not good. That probably means we have an adversary, a bad actor that has got some malware or something on the machine. So we've created a memory dump of the workstation and we place this dump onto employee issued USB stick and we're currently returning it for further analysis. So first section is what is memory forensics? So it's the analysis of volatile memory, which if we remember correctly, is the type of memory that maintains its data only while the device is powered. So once the machine's off, you would totally lose all that memory, but we've saved a copy that we can go through of what's running on a system at that current time. So this memory we know as RAM or random access memory, and that's the short-term memory in our computer. So this is like for multitasking, for most of us, we're running multiple apps at the moment. That's how things can be stored and accessed quickly, but it's not compared to long-term storage like a hard drive. And again, volatile, meaning it will be deleted and destroyed once the computer is powered off. So the purpose of looking at memory is we can see what apps or processes processes is what's known as a running application at the time. Network connections are being made and other useful things, that sort of thing. And we can analyze memory of a computer that's infected by malware, just another program, to see what it was doing at that current time. So I like this analogy of cooking. So it's like long-term storage, the hard drive, that's the fridge, all the food gets stored in there for when you need it. And you pick out the food or the ingredients that you're using to cook something to make the application, you leave those ingredients, those certain foods on the countertop. The countertop is sort of like the RAM. So next up, why is memory forensics useful? So it's an important part of investigating a computer. A memory dump is a full capture of what was happening at a computer at a time. It's like a photo of what's going on on a system. As we mentioned, network connections, things that are running in the background, programs, applications, and as we said, malicious code or malicious program software malware. So this cannot hide from memory. It has to go through memory. So the whole point is discovering exactly what was happening when the malware was acting as a process, what it was actually doing. Was it contacting something? Like we'll find out. So next is an introduction to processes. So like mentioned in the simplest format, a process is just a program that's currently running. So we have a screenshot here, an example of a process created when running an instance of a notepad, another program. So you can have multiple processes for an application. So in the case of notepad, it'll actually create three processes. So the importance here is being able to determine what processes were running on a computer and that'll tell us what applications were running at the time of the capture. So generally there are two categories of processes, a user process and a background process. A user process are programs that we as the user, the human, launches like text editors, web browsers, and that sort of thing. A background process is often automatically launched and managed by the operating system. And these can be often essential to the operating system behaving correctly. So for example, dwm.exe is an essential process responsible for displaying windows and applications on the computer. The next up is introducing volatility. Okay, that confused me for a second. Volatility is different to like what we were talking about, volatile. So it's just the name that they've used for this open source memory forensics toolkit that's written in Python. Cool, so it's not to be confused with the term for data that will be erased when a computer turns off. That's volatile data. This is just the name of a program. Got it. So this program volatility allows us to analyze memory dumps taken from Windows, Linux, Mac OS, devices, and, and is an extremely popular tool in memory forensics. For example, volatility allows us to list all the processes that we're running, list active and closed network connections, use Yara rules. Is that like a YAML file where we can sort of like make some automations? Not really sure. To search indicators of malware, 
retrieve hash passwords, clipboard contents, contents of command prompts, and much, much more. Yeah, no, it sounds crazy. So once Volatility and its requirements, Python, are installed, Volatility can be used running through Python 3 and then using vol.py. And there's a help menu by using dash H like we have in many programs. So today's task will cover Volatility 3, which was initially re released in 2020, replaced the depreciated Volatility 2 framework. So calling Volatility Tool Python 3, so we saw that any operations such as a name and location of the memory dump, actions you want to perform, I what the plugin wants to use. Okay, so here's just some switches and flags for us. So dash F, so that's like the file providing the name and location of the memory dump that you wish to analyze. V for verbosity, verbosity. So like most programs, we want to see the output so we can a bit more visual aid for us. Dash P, so there's something called plugins in this that might be some further user created like systems to automate stuff. Maybe there's a plugin library, that sort of thing, maybe. Uh, dash O, this argument allows you to specify where extracted processes or DLLs are stored. Okay, I'm not really sure about the last two, so we'll uh, see how this goes once we get into it. So we have a link to the documentation, which was gonna be handy. So the goal of this task is to see what operating system memory dump is from, see what processes were running at the time of the capture and see what connections were being made at the time of the, the capture. Okay, so I think it's a good time that we jump into our system. Next up, using volatility to analyze an image. Uh, so I've just gone show split view at the top there. Okay, so we need to confirm the operating system of the device that the memory has been captured from. So we need to do this because that'll help us to determine what plugins to use in our investigation. So let's use image info, a plugin to analyze our memory dump file to determine the operating system. To do this, we need to use the following command. Remember to include our memory dump using the dash F. So let's go inside our volatility directory here. And it looks like we've got a few things, uh, including our workstation VMEM, which is a backup of a virtual machine's paging file. Have you, I've heard the term paging to do with RAM. So while we're in here, let's type out Python 3 using this vol.py that we've got here and it's executable. So we're running that through Python. Dash F to specify the file that we want. Workstation.vmem is right there. Uh, we don't have tab to complete. Oh no. VMEM, my spelling must be precise. <laughs> Uh, and then we're gonna go windows.info. So I guess this is the format of how to use this plugin, windows.info. Let's see our output. So volatility three framework, it's progressing through. And I note here, this sometimes can take a couple of minutes depending on the size of the memory dump and the hardware of the system running. So we are on a remote virtual machine. So that might have very low specs. And I would assume because it's a free event, uh, it's probably gonna take a little while. So see in a bit, uh, it's just finished now. So yeah, took a minute or so. So while we're here, let's go and skip all this and look at the questions and we can answer these as we go along. So what is the Windows version number that the memory image cap so looking at the output of our forensics scan, we've got major operating system version 10. So it looks like we've got an Windows 10 machine. So scrolling back up, we've got a confirmation of our operating system and we've got a few subset of plugins with volatility. And these are gonna be the focus of today's task. So we've got windows.ps list. This plugin lists all the processes that were running at the time of the capture. All right, that's gonna be important. So windows.ps scan. So this allows us to analyze a specific process even further. So if we find a unusual process and we wanna look at it in more detail, we'll use PS scan. Next, windows.dump files. So that allows us to export the process where we can perform further analysis, static or dynamic analysis. Okay, so if we wanna like put it over something, maybe that's faster to run scans just on one process rather than the whole memory file every time. I'm not sure about static and dynamic analysis. So I don't know the difference there. Next, windows.netstat, which allows us to see all the network connections. So in case that this malware is connecting to a malicious server like a C2, or maybe it's just sending out important information for something so we can see what IP addresses that it's connecting to. And we have a list to all of the Windows subset plugins that can be found. And there's a lot. Let's just focus on what we need for today. So next, showing these plugins in use. So first, windows.ps list. So we've got pretty much the exact same command that we need to run, except we're just changing the plugin at the end. So I'm just gonna hit the up arrow 
and I'm just going to change info to PS list. Make sure to drink water while you're waiting for scans to complete. All right, cool. Um, that took about a minute or so less than the first scan. So as we learned, this is all of the processes or the programs that are in an instant of running at the time of this capture. So it's essentially like opening task manager, uh, but we're not seeing a live feed of what's working. So the goal here is to search through. And since it's not a big list, um, I think we can do this manually, right? So there's dwm.exe. Uh, we saw that earlier. That's important for Windows. Some other things that make sense, like win the logon. Some processes I've always seen in Windows Task Manager, but I've never stopped to wonder or look into what do they do so is there anything in here that's sort of unusual spool.sv wasn't that a printer it was like a vulnerability in spool i think we used that in the october event from triacme so some more background processes like microsoft edge the browser search ui search indexer the start menu our uh, skype was running at the time so just generic stuff. I'm not seeing anything malicious with my experience of doing this one time. I'm sort of expecting something obvious, but I'm just going one by one and I don't know what I'm looking for. Okay, we've got a mystery gift.exe, I assume. So if I go down to our task, we've got what is the name of the binary slash gift that secret Santa left? So we've got mystery gift.exe. E X E. I can't see the last E, but I assume there's a last E. So the next question is, what is the process ID or PID of this binary? Uh, so I think I would have to go all the way to the top and it's a little bit laggy connecting to BNC. So I'm just, I think it's this first four digits and we're looking for four digits. So I'm gonna say 2040. Uh, and then lastly, dump the contents of this binary. How many files are dumped? Okay, let's go back up and see what we needed to do for that. And if we remember out of the plugins, there was dump files. And if we scroll down, we've got that example. So same sort of command that we're gonna run. So control L to clear the screen up. And we're just gonna hit Alt backspace to get rid of that last scan. And we're just gonna run dump files and hit enter and let that do its magic. All right, that was a lot faster. That was just like a few seconds. So we're looking to answer how many files are dumped. Is it still running? I've got progress at a hundred, but my, oh, no. Okay, not touching anything, still going. We've got some errors dumping files. Okay, so just looking at the hint, um, I shouldn't be seeing this error. So I'm gonna hit Control C and just cancel that. So we're not dumping the process of everything. We just wanna dump of that one ID. So this is where I should have used PID 2040. All right, uh, that worked pretty instantaneously. So that's cool within a minute. Uh, so manually counting them, we've got 16. And if we list out our files, oh damn, we've got a lot of files. This is asking us how many files in total. So is it just, let's just start with 16 because that's what I saw. Okay, so that's it. But there were also a lot of other files that were also outputted. Um, so yeah, we can do further analysis on that. So just out of interest, if we just run PS scan against that process, can we find out exactly what it was doing? Because at the moment, I have no idea what it was actually doing. We have finished our questions. So if you need to go, get out of here. Um, but if you want to see if this goes anywhere, stick around. Uh, so the answer is it didn't go anywhere. Well, maybe it does. I'm, I'm not really sure, but I'll just leave it there. So that was day 11. Thank you very much for watching this video up until now. I do appreciate it. Feel free to leave a like, a subscribe and ding that bell. If you'd like to leave a comment, I would appreciate that. How did you find this room? What are you up to? I know I'm a little bit behind in this current event. Up on the screen, you will see a recommended video just for you, plus the playlist to the other are in this series. So thank you very much again, and I will see you in the next one. Okay.